My name is Lawrence Brandt, and I am the Emeritus Chief of Gastroenterology at Montefiore Medical Center, and I am Professor of Medicine and Surgery at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the Bronx, New York. So we can start off with our study, which was a study that was conducted in several centers at the same time. It was a compilation of individual practitioners' experiences with fecal transplantation. And the centers were located across the United States. We have Seattle, California, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, and New York. And together, uh, we accumulated just short of 100 cases, 100 patients with recurrent, resistant, refractory C. difficile colitis. And basically, these are people that had at least two episodes of recurrent disease. Most of them were now being treated for their third episode of C. difficile. And they had gone through all of the conventional therapies with metronidazole and vancomycin and then a tapered pulsed course of vancomycin. And then they had a fecal transplant by one of us. And then we pooled our results. And we were able to find 77 patients that had had their fecal transplant at least three months prior to our asking them to fill out this questionnaire. And in fact, they were all symptomatic, had been symptomatic, for about 11 months prior to the time that uh, they got their fecal transplant. And uh, we had patients that uh, we had followed for up to eight years. So this is a pretty good number in terms of a relatively long-term experience with how people tolerated it, uh, how they did, what happened to them after the fecal transplant. And uh, what we found was that despite the long time that these patients had their symptoms, and by the way, these were, in essence, elderly people. Most of them were older than age 65, because C. difficile is a condition of the elderly. So uh, despite the fact that they had had symptoms for an average of 11 months, they got relief of their symptoms quite promptly in more than half of the patients. Relief was experienced, and now I'm talking cure, in less than three days, three days or less. And um, that was in more than half the patients, but certainly the vast majority, the vast majority in under six days. And I know that I have had patients who have called me hours later and said, I feel better already. Something different happened as a result of this transplant. So that's one very important point, is that relief of symptoms is prompt. The second important point is how often does one get relief of symptoms? And the answer is we looked at two kinds of cure rates. One was a primary cure rate. And that means total relief of symptoms with no recurrence for a period of time afterwards. And I think that recurrence was um, two months. And 91% of the patients fall into that category of prompt relief and cure, primary cure rate of 91%. We had another cure rate that we call the secondary cure rate. And that referred to patients who had gotten all of the treatments before the fecal transplant, and then they got their fecal transplant, 
And then afterwards, they didn't get relief. Some of those patients had a second fecal transplant and got relief. Some of those transplant the patients took another course of vancomycin and then got relief. And that's very important because what that tells you is that if you change the bacterial or microbiotic, which is a more general term, because we really don't know it's bacteria, so all the living organisms that are in stool, if you correct that population and reestablish a more normal population of bacteria by putting in stool from healthy people, you then give that person the ability to respond to the vancomycin. Whereas before, they had a damaged intestinal flora and they couldn't respond. Now you gave them the ability to respond. If you look at that cure rate now, we're talking 98.3%.